I want to get to something because what's been in the news, unfortunately, and I want to talk about the innovations in, in uh, the airline industry, but what's been the focus recently of innovations that have happened is the Boeing crashes. Yep. Um, so one of the things that's important is the airlines have to innovate and get different and, and become better and better. Um, talk a little bit about this impact on your industry when you're thinking about innovations versus safety versus changes and where things are going. Well, for start, safety is always the utmost priority. So sure. there's there's never a compromise around safety. And I, I really can't speak too much on the MAX. We don't fly the MAX. And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes in life, you'd rather be lucky than smart. And that's this one we got lucky on. We're, we're an Airbus customer in that fleet size, the, the 321neo. And happy that we went made that decision a few years ago, obviously. But safety is safety is not, it's not something we compete against. It's not something. And, and if you think about the US aviation market mm -hmm. and the travel market, we're the safest form of transportation in the world of any form, mm -hmm. of any form of mobility, the U.S. aviation uh, transportation uh, aviation market is the safest. So, I think it speaks to the fact that this was truly a one-off, in my opinion. A one-off. A, a one-off in terms of what happened. There's certainly going to be lessons learned. We don't know all the facts yet. I think there's still some some facts that are continuing to to, to come out of this. Boeing will figure it out. I have no doubt about that. They're a great technology company. They, you know, they. We wouldn't be here in this room if it wasn't for Boeing together, right? right? So they, they, it's fundamental to who we are, and, they, and it's, it's the lifeblood to our industry. It's, so I'm, it's not something that I'm concerned about. It's, the reporting that's coming out shows a lot of corner cutting, a lot of trying to get things more automated, all kinds of things. It doesn't show a great picture of technological innovation that's going on in, in airlines. And maybe I'm misreading a lot of these. Well, as, as these planes, the 737, which is the core plane, is the most successful widely yes. used plane in the world. And as they continue to grow it and extend it, uh, they, they adapted, they made a decision around these sensors with an MCAS decision, which fundamentally is flawed. And I think they've admitted that as much. I can't explain why I'm not there. But it's not something that at Delta we ever take for granted. You know, safety is, is paramount to everything but we do. But how do you evaluate it when you have them making these changes? They're competing on features. I think there was a lot of hurrying. To oh, we, we spent, you know, when we evaluated the MAX, we spent a year studying that airplane, studying every element, because we already fly 200 737s, so different variants. We studied every part of that airplane, every version, to make certain that it was something that, because we, we maintain it. Mm -hmm. Once, once we take the plane in, it's 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 our it's our property. So we need to understand, and and safety candidly was not something ever high on the list. Thinking that there's a high risk, it's not safe. It's, it's honestly, it's somewhat unthinkable. Mm -hmm. What what's happened? And I think we're still all we've been traumatized. Right, right, as an industry, still still getting our minds around what happened. But it's not something that we'll ever compromise or, or take for granted on. So you do to be clear, you do business with Boeing. Of course. Right, and. You don't second guess anything about that relationship when you see something like this happen. Not, not at all. Not at all. They, you know, we, 60% of our airplanes that we fly are Boeing. Uh, Boeing has been the most successful aviation company in the world, and we know the insides and the outs of, of, of the plane, the technical details of it, the engines, whether it be GE or Pratt Whitney that's produced, and this is something that we're still learning. So I think the, the even the speculation is obviously a premature. But I have utmost confidence that this is going to be solved. I think the issue they're going to face is more, as we're, as we're kind of moving through this, how quickly can it even be brought back into a, a world of consumer confidence? So talk about that consumer confidence, because one of the things, we almost had Dennis here, actually, and I guess he thought better of it. Um, but but he, we'll do an interview with him. We're going to be doing an interview with him. But um, when you think about innovations, one of the things that was pressing it was innovations to make make these planes work more automatically, work e easier for the pilots so that they're easier to fly. What do you look for when you're looking for aviation innovations? What, is the, what are some of the ones that you're looking at? Well, the, w one of the biggest ones is efficiency. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to fly it farther, fly it with more people on it, fly it more fuel efficiently, and fly it with, with, with you know, composite materials that are lighter. Uh, mm -hmm. The planes we're bringing in today are on average 25% more fuel efficient, which by the way, all of us want to do that. You know, it's the right thing to do from our stewardship perspective on the environment. 25% more fuel efficient than the variants that we're retiring. So so the, the core aspect of, of the plane, first of all, is, is the core economics. Then the second part, and again, safety is in its own category. 
safety. We understand that plane uh, t tail nuts. And I'll tell you, when we, we did the study of the plane, we never had a, a big discussion of MCAS. I mean, I'm sure if we got into the plane, we might have and made a decision to buy it, we probably would have, would have had some questions, but we never even went there. Second thing is when we look at planes, it's customer comp uh, comfort. We want the plane to be something that our people can serve well and our customers enjoy flying on. So I'm sorry, Bob, so what are the innovations you're looking for? Is it, is it fuel efficiency? Is it more AI in it and data that you can get from these planes? Well, it, it, it is certainly the efficiencies I talked about. You know, the, the data is, is already there. Yeah, it, yes, the new variants are throwing off more data. You know, the problem we have with, with a lot of the aircraft and the engine data that's being produced, trying to figure out what, what, is, what do you do with it? What's relevant? What's the, what's yeah. the real meaning behind it? We've got amazing predictive uh, maintenance technologies that we've already at Delta have deployed, and we run, you know, I think the best maintenance operation in the world. Uh, I was telling a group I was speaking to earlier today, you know, 10 years ago we bought Northwest Airlines, and we had a, we had a really difficult uh, year, our first year of integration. We had 6,000 cancellations due to maintenance alone in that year, in, in one year in 2010. Yeah, I think I rode those planes, but go ahead. <laughs> this, Based on this, what? Was, is that just the age of the planes? It was, it was, it was maintenance issues, lack of familiar, familiarity in, some, in terms of what some of the causes were at, at times. It was, it was just integrating the fleet. This past year, we had 60, 6 mm -hmm. the entire year a 99% reduction in maintenance cancels. Now, no, no airline in the world can talk to that in terms of those types of numbers, but it tells you that it's predictive technology and engine technology. What we're it, using, the, going we're using the data, so I don't know what more data we're going to get to, you know, to, you know you're not going to get better in 60 you know, in a year. So we're, we're already pretty skilled in that, in, in, the, in the knowledge set. I think you know, when the airplanes themselves, as the new, these new variants come on, whether it's the MAX or the 321 deal, there's going to be more information and data to share. But I think that will then be the industry learning as compared to just Delta. What does R&D look like for a major, major global airline in 2019? Well, we're investing aggressively. We'll invest almost $5 billion dollars in capital, which is a fundamentally our R&D. Our technologies run multiple years. They'll run up to 20 to 30 years as we roll out new fleets. So airplanes, airports, we've got new airports going up in LA, in Seattle, Salt Lake, uh, New York, uh, rebuilding LaGuardia. Oh, um, finally. Yeah, exactly. Uh, our digital technologies, we're spending half a billion dollars, just pure technology, driven digital being the big part of it. And that's a run rate, that four to five billion dollar level that we're going to continue, continue to maintain. That's close to, to put it in context, close to 10% of our top line is, is going into that space. At the same time, we're generating, because we've got the balance sheet and the health of the company back, we're generating also just about as much free cash flow of the company as well. So in the consumer digital experience right now for Delta, what, what is not where you want it to be? What needs to be fixed or improved? Uh, there's there's a lot we can improve. I wouldn't say it's not where we, we're, we we're not un unhappy with it because I'll say that. But. Okay, you can say that, but but I'll tell you that we are we are within our peer set doing a great job as well as we're innovating. The thing we had to do that people lose sight of with these 95 year old company is that we had to build the foundation first. We spent several years building the infrastructure and the architecture and being able to get get at the data because it was truly a, a, a an incredible maze of spaghetti mm -hmm. strewn all around the company with all legacy systems. We're bringing the digital technologies almost on a weekly basis now into the market. Our, our Fly Delta app is one of the best rated airline apps out there. We'll get better. There's more we can do. I think the big thing you're going to see us do is bring the technologies, not just into the hands of the customers going mobile in terms of controlling your experience with Delta, but into the hands of our employees so that our flight attendants, our pilots, our gate agents, our people in reservations in maintenance can actually start to interact more efficiently with each other and with customers to continue to run an even better better operation. Digital changes the game entirely. What about one of the things they were talking about earlier was facial recognition of getting on and off planes. Now I do clear. I've had clear for almost a decade now. I had it my very early. Yeah, the old clear and the new clear. The new clear, all the clears, yeah. um, which I like, which I'm trading convenience yeah. for my entire identity, which I realize now. Um, but one of the things we're talking about is this idea of facial recognition, yep. about safety on planes. It's not just safety of the planes, it's safety of getting on the planes, yep. safety within the planes. Do you see yourself pushing heavily into that area where you, you know, this is a raging passenger. We're not letting them on the plane. This is someone who has a history. This is. Oh, absolutely. 
You, I, I, you think I, it's okay to facially recognize people? If, if, if we have a, a reason to believe a passenger is not safe, right. we have an obligation to not let that passenger. Sure, but would you use facial? What do you think about the ideas of using facial recognition? Well, board uh, planes to. Well, well, we we use facial today in in Atlanta for international. Mm -hmm. Now it's an opt-in, so you don't have to to do facial. So if you decide to do facial, facial is, is run by the Customs and Border Patrol. So it's right. not Delta making that decision. It's the government, and they use that facial recognition to check against their, their, their industry database. And how do you use it? We use it to speed up the, the process through. It's really the government's technology. We're implementing it in our, in our airports to allow customers to go through the, the process without any paperwork at all, so whether it's check-in. But the, the, the question about getting on an airplane passes through the government's hands, and that's where CBP takes control. Yeah, I know. They just got hacked yesterday, so I'm, I'm like, <laughs> disturbed by that question. How do you feel about that? How do you think customers react to that idea that, they're, that they, they have the convenience of getting on a plane, but they're also having their face tracked? Well, or is it just like a ticket or a... I, I, th I think at the end of the day, um, it's a more effective tool in terms, of, in terms of being able to make certain it's not just the person who it is. The person that's returning to the country is the same person that left. It's not a different identity. I think, secondly, it will be a more efficient process. It's the reason you use Clear, is mm -hmm. that you, you, you get through, and it's, it's a faster process, and you can avoid those, uh, those lines on CBP as you come into the country can be, can be difficult. We've got to find a way to accelerate. I think people value time. Do you think you have, have you found yourself having to think harder about decisions around facial recognition than you might have a couple of years ago for a couple of reasons, for sort of political climate we're in, for just, um, you know, privacy. you see yeah, privacy discussions, you see inside the big tech companies, you see employee activism. Um, are, you, are you thinking about these issues in a different way than you might have a couple of years ago? No question. You know, with, with, as we continue to expand our technology into the spaces you're talking about with digital and, and being able to let our consumers know more about us so we can know more about them and be able to engage in a deeper relationship, we have to maintain that same level of trust and care that we have with putting you in the sky as compared to protecting your private identity and, and your data. And yeah, we, have, we have a lot of people you know, looking at all the technologies that we're thinking about rolling out, making certain they, they comply with all privacy laws. We're not a technology company at its core, so we're not ever marketing the data or selling the data but we still want to make certain that we're adhering to those same privacy standards. So explain how you think the flight experience will work in 10 years. Because it's changed so drastically over the, I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember just walking through an airport. Now that's obviously for safety reasons not allowed anymore. If mm -hmm. there's the hijackings and now the terrorist attacks. What, is, what does flight look like? Well, the flight experience continues to get better. You know, our, our operational performance has been, has been incredible. Uh, you know, this, we just ended this past weekend a run where we had f over 40 days in a row without a cancellation mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, uh, these are, we're running levels of excellence and performance that we've never seen. The, the, and the flying experience is getting to the point where value for money is also significant because consumers today are paying 40% in real dollars less than they did 20 years ago for the price of tickets. So, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, deregulation of our industry back in the 1980s has worked and it's democratized travel, it's brought people out. I never stepped foot on a plane before I was 25 years old. Mm -hmm. How I ever got this job, I'm still not quite sure, so I'm trying to, trying to figure out. But, so, but, you know, it wasn't affordable. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't something I did when we grew up. Now our kids think, you know, I'm a dinosaur as mm -hmm. if, if, you don't, if you don't fly. Uh, I think the big change, Cara, is gonna be in the airports going forward and that's Meaning, why what did they look like the airports the airports gonna look significantly different um, they're gonna they're, first of all we're gonna try to take the stress out of the airports you know we, we realize the is airports, that why I'm seeing beer gardens everywhere in Newark Airport <laughs> a garden in the airport doesn't end. what one not, not 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 at our, our, our gates but, okay uh, <laughs> but you know one of the things about airports we got to remember these were built 50 60 70 years ago for an era that has long passed mm -hmm. us, right? So volume, security apparatus, even the, the, the physical layouts. You know, back then, people would come to the airports to look at the marvel of the front headhouse, we call it, the front door, or the artwork. And you know, when would, did you ever spend time in the front, out, front of an airport? You never go there. And yeah. it's, it's almost right now, you just go directly to security. You don't even stop at the counters, because you've, right, you've, right you've got your yeah. mobile, exactly. So, so, but all of our physical layout is up front. 
So we've got to flip it around, put our physical layout back by the gates where people want to get to and, also, and make that front door almost the security, you know, getting into the, the, the property to begin with. Uh, you're going to see a, a very different uh, boarding process. I think it's the other area is a tremendous stress where you see people looking, looking to line up and everyone wants to get on at the same time and yeah. carry most of their earthly belongings. And, and, and you know, wh why does anyone want to sit in an airline seat longer than they have to? Mm -hmm. right? It's just, just people don't, uh, but they want to get on board and they, they want to make sure their, their, their property gets on board with them. Well, if we have with RFID technology, which we've now rolled out, confidence and we are over, well over a 99% interval rate, confidence that your bag will be there waiting for you when you, you know, get to the, the, uh, the, the baggage area at the end of the flight. Would you really try to carry that bag on? You, if, you, if you had confidence it was going to be there, you'd say, sure, sure, let me, you know, let me have it to take that space out. We're looking at even taking the boarding cues out, taking the podiums out. You put podiums, it just gives people reason to line up. Mm -hmm. What if there's no podiums? And you are know, our, our run crazy for the entrance. No, 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 no. Our, well, no we're gonna have, we're gonna have chairs. We're gonna have, we're gonna have nice nice chairs like this. We have chairs that people can sit down. And agents with 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 technology in their hands, yeah. the digital technology yeah. I'm talking about, that they can they can serve as a host or hostess rather than a ticket taker. Right. Transaction. That's how you build relationships. That's what we're designing. Wait, you sit for the a chair. Future. I'm sorry. Explain this to me. <laughs> instead <laughs> of like of chairs. instead of arguing with people at, at getting in the, the line, essentially. You do what? You sit in a chair and what? We, we have you people. Scan your eyes. Pe pe people wait right. until they, they need to get on board, rather than everyone wanting to get board, on board at the same time. How do you change people's behavior patterns like this? Well, if, if, if you don't have some place to stand, what do you do? Fine. Look for a place to plug you it. Look for phone. a place to sit. Right. right. Yeah. So, but, but, so but it's are going to take time. It's going to take time. Uh, we're experimenting with it, but but it's but it's knowing that the the agents are out there with the technology in their hand, and that's who you need to talk to and whatnot. And, and these people will be trained to try to scoop up bags mm -hmm. if there's bags that can be checked. But again, it's going to take some time. There's got, it has to be confidence that technology works and it's being delivered on. We put the technology in. There's still teething pains. A lot of it's going to be around network bandwidth. You know, 5G yeah. is going to be a big deal for us because in the airports because we actually have, will have the, the Wi-Fi capabilities to actually implement this at the level of fidelity that we're looking to create. And th this would create this ability to check people in a very different way. Yeah, so, so that you know, with, with the bag, with the RFID today that we have, the technology, we have scanners out there, we have sensors that will pick up the bags. You'll be going on to the belt loader. It is trained, the belt loader, is if that bag is going to the wrong destination, it will stop the belt loader. Mm -hmm. And it will cause the gate agent to, or the ramp agent to go look at it and figure out where that tag is, get it onto the right plane. It will also be able to track it. You can flat track your bag on the Fly Delta app. You can, you'll know where it is. You'll see it get to the baggage claim before you do as you're, as you're walking to it. It will tell you what baggage area you need to go to. That, that's what we're creating for the future, and technology is going to be critical in getting there. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. You're talking about efficiency, you know, looking to fly farther, have more people on the plane. Um, I'm five foot seven on a good day, and um, I am not comfortable in coach. And maybe after my podcast, I'll be moved up to a different section no. of the plane. No. Okay. Um, shit. Uh, it was a good, good try. Um, I hear more people on a plane, and I get nervous. Like you know, about seat size, about a lot of things. What do you can, yeah, can you what, unpack what, that a little bit? Like what, when will is there a day? that we could look forward to where the lowest level of seats is something that's more comfortable than it is today. Well, we haven't changed our seat pitch, our Every seat breath. size, oh, okay. yeah. our seat length in years. That's a bunch of five foot seven people. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm six foot three. Okay? I know. We're going to talk and, and, about that. And by the way, I fly coach most of the time, too. Oh, you too. Okay. I, 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 I'm back there with it. It's more, it's, it's more fun back there. Yeah. It's, 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 it's aisle seat, I hope. You, there. you need that leg in the aisle. I, I, I try to get an aisle seat when I can, Is but I don't always. Is it more fun back there? There's much more fun back there. There's I no never go about. back there anymore. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to look. I do not. You I should like, come. You should come back with the people. I should not. People. I like sitting up front with all the white guys. It's great. You, <laughs> need, you, need, you need to come back. You need to come back. There's two white I guys. Why, we'll be how happy I wonder why. How I could possibly be there. Us. They're like, what are you doing here, exactly. little lady? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. It is. It, but but when your your question gets to, um, really, how do you how do you value the seat? You know, in value and and because what I mentioned earlier is that ticket prices have come down by 40 percent, people get great value and as a result of that you have really low fares yep. and you have what we call in our, our 
our, a piece of our business is basic economy. Is that, that that seed is kind of the lowest fare. You won't get anything with it. You'll get the small seepage. You have opportunities if you want to pay an extra $10, an extra $20 to move up into a Comfort Plus seed, which will give you an extra, extra few inches, not that much money, or even first class. One of the big changes we've made in our business is we brought first class fares down. Yeah. Remember, they used to be like 10x. Right. They're down to, to to affordable levels, so we sell most of What's our that? front three, five x. Well, no, no, it's much less. No, you can it's, get it's between thing. between two to three x. You can tell I it know depends nothing on, about first class. Well, we need right? to we need to okay. try we need okay. to try that on. You. Okay. But you can you can buy an upgrade many times for for a hundred bucks, you know, to yeah. get to get on to. That's uh, what Virgin yeah. America pioneered, and then it closed. Um, well, we've we've been doing that well before they were doing it, yeah. and and so so now what you have is that you have. You've, you've, you really have created much greater value for money for people. We've seen our customer satisfaction scores for lots of reasons go through the roof. We're, we're, we're well into the 50s. We used to be at 25 a number of years ago, and they're continuing That's to climb. That's so NPS scores. NPS scores. Yeah. And, and we're continuing to make great progress. So one more thing on innovation, I think we, we're remiss if we don't talk about what's going on in Georgia right now, because that's where your headquarters. Um, but carbon-free jet fuel. So I was, you know, David uh, Wells, Wells was taught, it was the idea that the planes are the things that are really problematic for climate change. Um, and I know all the companies say we're trying to fix climate change, but you know your business is problematic for the planet. Mm -hmm. um, where do you put money into innovating on carbon-free jet fuel, for example? We we are certainly uh, investing in, in biofuel uh, resources, but that is not the big answer. Mm -hmm. The big answer for us is becoming a lot more efficient in terms of usage. You know, every plane that we put out there today is 25% more fuel efficient, the new ones, than the ones we're retiring. We're replacing a third of our fleet over the next five years. That's significant. Uh, we've made a commitment to reduce our carbon footprint by 50%, 5 by the year 2050. And that, 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 that's an industry goal, but Delta has made that a specific commitment. And, we have, we've, and we're, we're on a good track. We're reducing it somewhere between 1% to 2% per year every year along that journey. So you know, we capped our emissions at 2012 levels, and every year they continue to come down. Uh, the bigger planes, you know, putting more people on the planes, you may not like that, uh, Jason, but, but you know, that, that helps with efficiency in terms of having fewer planes in the sky. It helps with our stewardship responsibilities. And the other thing that we're one of the only airlines that does is that if you feel particularly concerned about this issue, you can offset your personal carbon footprint on our website. We'll calculate for you what you created and the cost to offset that. Offsets, I don't know. Well, we, 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 we're I investing. Was, we're, we're in it's interesting. It's an interesting. The carbon offsets. I once had I, some Google people. They're like, we're doing carbon offsets on all our private planes that they take all around them. And they were, they, were, they were flying around Kilimanjaro. And I was like, so you're flying to look at Kilimanjaro, but you're paying carbon offsets. Why don't you just not fucking fly around Kilimanjaro. <laughs> like it was a really interesting thing. So it's, yeah. that's really so not many, But this is for the average, the average yes. customer. Yeah. Can go in. It, it's, it's like $5 to fly from Atlanta to LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. We'll take that $5 and we'll do something. We'll put trees back, whether it's the Amazon, wherever, and we'll do it. And I know there's controversies to the effect, the efficiency of right. those offsets, but we're, we're looking into that as well. But and we're, we're, we're the only, one of the only airlines I know of that's doing that. And you think what you're doing today is enough? No. No, I mean we're not there yet. I mean we got we're, 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 we've reduced it by one to two percent a year, but we've got we've got a lot of progress to go. So to finish, we only have a few minutes. You can choose between um, unions with Bernie Sanders or we'll squeeze in both. Okay, or abortion, Abor abortion rights. Well, you can be great topics. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is our clock almost over? No, no, but <laughs> oh, but filibuster. You have a minute. Yeah, this one. Go for it. What do you what do you want me to say? Reproductive rights. You know, we, uh, the state of Georgia they're, has become... They're headquartered. It, it, we're, we're headquartered there. It's obviously become a, a big issue. It's, it's an incredibly emotional issue. There are a lot of people on both sides of this issue. We carry 200 million people a year. We have 80,000 employees. We cannot, as a company, take one group and put it over another group when you've got such an emotional, some would say almost religious view mm -hmm. as to what, what the right answer is. You know, I think this is something that the courts... Need to need to settle and resolve, not corporate America. Mm -hmm. Not corporate. You wouldn't let some I, 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 are at least in. for us. I can't. Yeah. I can't win. Disney is weighing in. Well, Disney has talent not willing to work. Right. This is this is something that this is our state. This is where we live. This is where we got 35,000 employees. Mm -hmm. And whichever whichever way you go on the topic, you're going to you're going to alienate. You know, millions, tens of millions of people. So that this is this is an issue that it's uncomfortable. You know, when you when you get to the point of social activism, 
uh, with CEOs. This is something we've been trained to stay away from. You know, this is a relatively recent phenomenon, no more. That, that, that you want everybody to love you. Uh, and you don't want to make enemies. And this is something we're still waiting through. And unions, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, you're, you're in the unique position over the last year where you, you've had the NRA coming at you on one side, and you've more recently had uh, Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren coming on the other side. So quick, quick recap. NRA. Um, so we're even. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> even. Um, NRA situation um, after the high school shooting in, in Florida, um, you were made aware of a discount program for some NRA members to, yep. to fly to their annual convention. Um, you did away with that, and right. NRA then went after Georgia lawmakers yep. um, to uh, eliminate a tax break that, that you all took advantage of. Yep. And, uh, it cost us $40 million a year. That same support. Georgia legislature that you're just talking um, about. More yeah, we love your legislature in Georgia. Well, go ahead. Number one well, fan, Kara Swisher. Um, more recently, um, Alabama. I'll Alabama. try to recap this correctly. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, Part of your employee base is um, there, there's a union drive going on, and uh, there were some flyers found in some of the um, uh, break, break rooms okay. um, that were seen as um, uh, trying to discourage unionization. And so, obviously, um, for president, presidential candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, it's a big issue. They've come mm -hmm. at you for that. Of course. Um, so you do get drawn into it. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we, we get. We, I'm not saying we can't get drawn into it, but I think you've got to, you can't, you, you've got to decide where you go because it's got to be relevant. So on this topic issue, I mean, we had we had flyers out there. They were out there. It was over a year ago, by the way, yeah. that this happened. It was only out for a few days, and it was it had it had equating union dues to buying a video game console, save, mm -hmm. save the money. Saying would you rather buy buy a video game? Yeah. Right? It was it was inappropriate. It was it was wrong. I didn't know about it. A bunch of other people didn't know about it. As soon as we found out about it, we had it. We had them pulled. A year later, they show up because you know the union got got uh, got uh, Senator Sanders engaged, and he tweeted out to me, you know, the copy of that, and said at the same time we're paying our ramp agents, you know, nine dollars an hour to work, trying to get people aware of the fact that you know we're making millions in corporate America, and these poor people out in the hot sun with these. Which, which was total lie. I mean, they're, they are, our, our starting salary for the ramp is double that. And we have the most generous profit sharing and benefits program in the industry. We have a, an, a, an agent working on the ramp who wants to get to full seniority after 12 years is making $75,000 a year, top scale in where, the industry. Where did the $9 an hour come from? I have no from? idea. I have no, it wasn't, wasn't, any, wasn't, there wasn't, anyone, is there anyone at Delta making no, $9 no, an we're, no, the, the opening, as I say, the, the starting salary there as well as other is, is almost double that. So th this is this is a fake issue, and it was it was there because it was opportunistic because there was this flyer out, you know, and I, and I rolled them back and we, and we made it public. Delta employees have gotten 80 percent pay increase over the last 10 years, 80 percent. I don't know any company 80,000 strong that can make a statement they paid all their employees 80 percent more over the last decade. Delta has, and so I feel feel totally vindicated that our employees have. Not only are they deserving of it because they, 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 they perform at the, at the highest levels, we also have the greatest relationship with them in, in serving customer needs. I have one more question. Did the, the flyers, while well, in poor taste, I think you said, or something along yeah. those lines, did they express how the company feels about this effort, this union drive? No, it was, it was in poor taste. No, it doesn't. I mean, I, do I have an opinion on this? Absolutely. Okay. My job is to take care of my people. If, there, if somebody finds some way better to take care of my people, I've got the problem. Okay, and that's my responsibility, not someone else's. Okay. And we do a darn good job of it too. All right, next question. Questions from the audience. Go ahead. Hi, Ed. Going back to the core business, first of all, congratulations for running the best run domestic legacy airline. Two questions for you. Um, your best clients, I'm a diamond uh, for as long as it existed. Thank you. Uh, you but, but Delta has led the industry in actually devaluing frequent flyers for their most loyal customers. You mentioned citing, you know, upgrading from coach to first. That took away the traditional upgrades. So tell me, one, how do you feel about the importance of the customer, your most loyal customers? And lastly, how are you going to compete with Mint on JetBlue domestically? Okay. Um, first question on loyalty. Yeah, we, we, we did the effect of, of, of uh, killing Social Security when we changed the loyalty program to it was used to be always mild, mileage-based, and we now make it revenue-based. So that's the, 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 the 
customers that are providing the greatest revenue value get the get the most points. Uh, that's the way almost every loyalty program out there is today. But unfortunately, if you're the first to go, you, 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 it's tough being the being the pioneer in that space. The other thing that we did at the same time, though, is that we've made made the the usage of those points significantly more available because because now we we allow the points to to float dynamically with price points in the market, and we have seen a 30% increase in the amount of usage and redemptions of, of the points because of the way the program is now structured. And as it used to be very rigid, 25,000 mile break to get a domestic ticket and 50,000 print. Now you can get them as low as 5,000. And one of the other things we're doing with technology and digital is we've got the point where you can actually use those, those miles and you can purchase that upgrade for you know, using miles for maybe maybe a thousand miles or whatever the the, the 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 number is for an individual segment, right on your phone as you're going to the airport, and you can just look up and it's two clicks and and you can upgrade. So we're we're creating greater availability. Um, you know, I I didn't get the question about JetBlue. Oh, we 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 compete very very well with those. Uh, you know, we that's that's our market. That's our that's our core bread and butter is, is our business travel and uh, Mint's a good product. Don't don't get me wrong, but it's it's relatively a niche a niche product for 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 them. Uh, we've got that throughout throughout our entire entire system. Yeah, Mint is dreamy, um, but but I will try the Delta one. But Mint is dreamy. Come um, again. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, sorry. Over here. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, hi. Um, so I fly a ton, all sorts of different airlines, uh, mostly internationally, and it, it does feel that uh, compared to the international carriers, the big American carriers are just worse and across many dimensions. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not flying Delta enough, obviously. That's, that's, that's one of your problems. Because um, at Delta, that's not the case. Uh, we, we rank, I mentioned our net promoter scores, we put them up against all the international competition on a regular basis, and we regularly are we're in the top top tier with those, those carriers. There's different types of international airlines. You know, you've got the, the Middle Eastern airlines that are subsidized tens of billions of dollars by their government and they're, 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 to give a lavish appeal and adornment to the airline. If, if our government gave me tens of billions of dollars, I would be able to provide that for you, but we don't, and we need a level playing field. Field and we're, this administration has actually been quite quite helpful in that. In that I was regard. going to make an NRA joke, but I won't. Thank you. Okay. Um, second, second thing is what we're doing is we're continuing to invest and in, in accelerate the growth of our, our international products. So the Delta One suite that, that, that Kara just mentioned won the award last year as the best new international product in the sky. And it, it's an enclosed suite. It's, it's our first class cabin. We've got a new Delta Premium Select on board. We're, we're bringing a lot of new innovation into the international marketplace, bringing new airplanes as well. But fundamentally, it's also about the people. You know, we have wonderful people, and I'd put our people up against any international airline there is. Awesome. Also, uh, you haven't obviously haven't flown Aeroflot like I have. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Neil Patel from The Verge. So we spent a lot of time at this conference talking about antitrust and regulation in tech. Airline industry is obviously the opposite, massively de deregulated, huge amount of consolidation. A lot of people would connect that to crappy experiences in coach, upsells across the entire line, uh, just the bad experiences everyone here is talking about. What lessons would you give to the tech industry having experienced this moment in reverse? Well, while we are deregulated, we are heavily regulated. Okay, 20% of what you pay us comes off our top line goes to the government in taxes okay that goes into airport taxes excise taxes fuel taxes heavily heavily taxed second only and it's close second to the you know, the, the alcohol and tobacco industry in terms of the rate of taxation that we, we absorb. Um, you know, with the FAA, our regulators are, are inside our company you know, every single day. So we're, we're substantially regulated. We're deregulated, it was from a, from a pricing standpoint. The government used to actually set the prices of the tickets. Now they let the free market. So it's not, the premise of your question is wrong. It's not, it's not an unregulated environment whatsoever. 
I also take issue with you with the, with the numbers I'm talking about Delta. I can't talk about my competitors, but I can tell you at Delta, uh, your experience or whatever you're saying is not on Delta because our net promoter score, our customer satisfaction scores have been climbing over the last 10 years. Our operational reliability is at a level we've never seen. And as you see us investing $5 billion in new planes, new airports, new technologies a year for the next five years, it's going to be pretty dramatic, you know, the continued improvements you're going to say. So I say fundamentally if you need to fly Delta more, um, but but the uh, but but that that's that's you know that's what that's what our, our numbers are and that's why we get the revenue premiums we are. Do you think the amount of by the way I'm a I'm also a Delta frequent flyer. Okay, good. I um, need to do it more. Can you add a Chicago to SF route? That'd be great for me. Um, uh, do you think the amount of consolidation in the industry has been healthy? I think it's been incredible. I mean, this this is an industry that went from boom bust with bankruptcies galore scale that no, no one had scale to compete. The reason we're performing the way we are and we've got the balance sheet back and our, our, our investment grade rating back is that we have the scale to invest for the long term. This is a high capital a capital intensive business with big fixed costs. You've got to be able to plan for the long term and have scale to implement to be able to bring you the benefits you have. And as I said, prices continue to come down every single year. So consumer value is, is I, I think, is, is few industries can match with respect to the declining prices we've seen for consumers. Okay, last very quick question. Hey, hi, Ed. Uh, Jason, the CEO of Comparably. Uh, hey, we actually have a bunch of data on you and your competitors, and your employees rank you as probably the best airline. Uh, one of the things I'm kind of curious about is other than just better benefits and paying them more, is there anything from a cultural standpoint that you do to – create a better environment that then comes back to the customer experience? Well, absolutely. It's, it's a, this, is, this is about a service business. You know, people love to talk about the airlines with the technology and the air, airports and the aircraft. It's got a lot of big, shiny objects. Fundamentally, it's a people business. It's the only thing that we have that our competitors don't have is our people. Because we all have the same, the same equipment, we all fly to the same places, we all pay the same amount for jet fuel. It's the culture and the values of the company that makes the big difference. And so, personally, that's my number one job. As I just told Jason, taking care of our people. I'm out every single day in front of them. Our leadership team is engaged with them. We're, we spend an enormous amount of time in, that, in, in the sense that, you know, it's, it's a team. It's, it's, it's a direct relationship that works. Uh, we also have, as I also said earlier, an incredible profit sharing plan. Fifteen percent of the profits of Delta go to the employees. They don't go to the managers. They go to the employees. This past Valentine's Day, we paid $1.3 billion in profit sharing to the employees. Fifth year in a row of over a billion dollars. No company has paid a billion dollars once. We found it. Uh, we've done it now five years in a row, and this year coming up is going to be the sixth. So they, they, they feel like they, they share in the success and the investments we're making in tools and technologies and new equipment are tools that they can go do an even better job for them so they feel the support that you have but it's 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 a full full on game this is not something that you can you can you know be sending out over social media you know compliments you've got to personally be engaged with them every single day it's it's a business that i love because it's just dealing with people and um, and and delta's got a great culture and a great history of that okay on that note thank you okay, thank you Ed.